fed up of floor droves, driven to distraction and drowning with doom boxes, tired of living in chaos? Welcome to Decluttering Untangled, how to declutter when you're overwhelmed, ADHD or autistic. I'm going to help you uncover the secrets to decluttering, no matter what hurdles you face. You'll discover how to declutter, de-stress and transform your world. I'm Heather Tingle, reformed hoarder, neurodivergent declutter queen and your guide through the maze of mess. Let's get untangled. Hello Untanglers and welcome to another episode of Decluttering Untangled. Today's episode has been brought to you because of something that happened to me and my family last week. So last week, my daughter had an operation. She's fine now. Um, And when she was um, recovering from the operation, the physios came around and removed a bandage from her. And and he said to her, would you like to keep this as a memento or a souvenir of your your stay? And she looked at him and just went, no. (laughs) And then later on, when um, we came to get discharged, they um, obviously snipped the ID bracelet from around her wrist. And again, they asked her, do you want to keep this? And she looked at them with absolute disgust and was like, no, because it's irritated me for like three days. I don't want them. Um, and I just thought, you know what? My work here is done. I am so relieved that I feel that I have worked really hard to remove that generational I don't know what the word is, heirloom almost, of having to save things as souvenirs and mementos for memories. Um, First of all, for her, like, you know, she did keep something, but I think we keep things, you know, she kept photos of the inside of her knee because she finds them interesting. Now, that's great. She can keep them for her. I really wouldn't be upset if she got rid of them, like, that's okay. But a lot of the time, it's, we keep things because one, we think we should kind of mark the occasion in some way. But also, you've got to think of actually, is it a negative thing that you're trying to keep hold of? Is it a negative memory that you're trying to mark in some way? And why is it important to keep the negative? From my point of view, I think you should only really keep the happy memories and triggers that will trigger happiness and smiles and things that are going to make you you know feel good not for my daughter you know two days of of pain and upset and stress and for me as well um so think about why you're worried about losing those memories is it important is this a story in your life that you would want to retell if the answer is no then it's okay you don't need to keep anything um, if you do want to keep something, think what else have you got of that memory? So often, often we now go out and we take photos of things. So most often we've got pictures. Is that enough? Do you Would that be appropriate? Have you got maybe an outfit from that memory or have you got something else to remember that person by? Are you trying to be a historian? So in a hundred years time, will people realise the significance of that item? Will they care about the item like you do? Will they attribute it to you and that period of time? So, for example, if my daughter had kept that bandage and that ID tag, in a 100 years' time, saying that she does have children, will her great-great-grandchildren care about that bandage or care about that ID tag? Highly, highly unlikely, I would say, unless they're very strange. Um, So, you know, it's not likely that they're going to, be bothered about those things so if you're being a historian and that is part of us you know I I, my background is I wanted to keep absolutely everything but thinking about in a hundred years time will that be important to my story was very important to me to help me decide what to stay and what what to let go of so I now have something called a blow my own trumpet folder and in that folder, I've got things like certificates, newspaper clippings that I've been, you know, been in, anything that I am really proud of and I would like someone to look through and that would be like the story of my life in successes, then that is what is in there. 
And that's great because it's stored neatly. It's stored in a way that's accessible and it's stored in a way that people would know that that was important to me. And all the information in there is is quite obvious as to what it is. So that would be something that might get passed down. I mean, it's highly likely it'll end up in a skip or being burnt one day. But it's more for me and for me with my memories. If I'm having a rubbish day, I can look back at it and think, yeah, I'm rocking it. I'm doing okay. So I would definitely encourage you and if you have children to definitely start a blow my own trumpet folder. Anything that you're proud of, any anything that you can think of that you want to put in there, it's a bit like a memory box, um, put it in a folder. But what I don't do anymore and used to absolutely do is I don't go purposefully looking for a souvenir at the end of an experience anymore. So if you've got children, you will know that generally if you go to any zoo or any kind of experience, you'll know that um, if you've got kids, in most places, to get out, you have to walk through the gift shop. Of course you do. And of course, there is always pens, random plastic tat, fridge magnets. Um, oh God, there's all sorts, isn't there? You know, there's all sorts of things in that gift shop. And there's always an ice cream counter as well. So What I don't do anymore is feel obligated to buy something to remember. So my daughter, obviously, you know, like any other child, is wanting to go to buy stuff. She has her own spending money. She wants to buy random plastic tat. That's up to her. Um, But I no longer feel that I must buy something to remember the day by because for me, the experience was now enough and that experience doesn't get brought back to me by having... I don't know, a notepad and pen to add to the other million notepads and and pens that I had. Um, The experience was enough for me. But I do, however, still have some photo magnets and fridge magnets in my kitchen from when I, you know, went on holidays and have been different places and had different experiences. I do have some of those, but I don't feel that every time I go somewhere, I have to add to it. It's no longer a collection for me. What I have is enough and if something leaps out at me and I really want to buy it then yes of course I will I don't feel that compulsion that it's no longer part of the experience to buy something to remember it by um so I recently read um an article in the Guardian newspaper on fridge magnets and I will put a link in the show notes gives you a bit more information about it um about fridge magnets on of holidays So the University of Liverpool recently did a study and concluded that fridge magnets for many people were used to unlock happy memories. And that's great, isn't it? Like, you know, that's what we want. However, it is found that they can blend into the decor of your home and then they become less memory triggers as if they were packed up and put away somewhere. So the theory is that if you're so used to seeing them all the time, you don't notice them anymore. Now, I think it's highly likely that if you're the kind of person that feels that you've got to have fridge magnets to remember something by, it might be possible that your home is very full as well. Now, if you live in a cluttered home, of course, they're going to blend in with everything else. But if you imagine, if you went into like, for example, Ikea and went around their beautiful show home type places, if you put like four fridge magnets on the fridge freezer. Now, don't say do this. Please don't because you'll get kicked out of Ikea. Um, But if you did that, it's highly likely that you'll notice them every single time you go to the fridge. However, if you have got 50 of them and a load of random papers and like menus and important letters that you've totally forgotten about on that fridge, they do blend into the background and you will totally forget about them. Of course you will. So it's important that you think about where your memories are stored. Now, decluttering, first of all, will help you process all your memories, good ones as well as bad. But if you declutter, it means the memories that are left over in item form, um, those triggers are more obvious to you. You will see them more and be able to enjoy them more. However, if for my, you know, for me, if they're in a box. In the attic, from my point of view, there is absolutely no point having them as memory triggers because you're not going to just climb into your attic every so often and and have a look in there to get the memory. So I think it's really important that you find a way to 
enjoy these items. So they're on display and they're enjoyed, but they don't blend in because you've decluttered all the other superfluous stuff around them. Um, and you don't want them to blend in to everyday life because then they kind of lose their potency. So I hope that makes you think a little bit more about your compulsion to buy something for, with, with a memory. And I think it's important to end to say that whatever you choose to keep or buy, if anything, you might not, it's a really individual thing. And some things that you think other people may find silly are important to you. And that's totally, totally okay. But please do find what works for you and your family in your home. And all I would ask is that you keep happy memories that are key parts of your life in a way that works for you. So that's some thoughts for you to think about this week. So until next time, remember, you're not alone. Keep untangling. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks for joining me for today's episode of Decluttering Untangled. If you found anything that I've said today helpful, please do me a favour hit that subscribe button or leave me a review. It's like receiving a virtual high five that keeps me going and lets me know that I'm helping real people out there and I'm making a difference. Please remember, you're not alone in this. I'm building a community of fellow untanglers over on Facebook. Just visit the show notes for the link to my free decluttering community. So until next time, remember, you're not alone. You're not lazy. You can untangle your life.